What up, Whiskey Ginger fans? Welcome back to the show. Like I always say, please hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you know when we post, but we post every single Friday as usual. I got a good one for you today. Uh, a returning Ryan Sickler comes on the pod, the Juco King. I love this dude, man. He's so funny. He has the most infectious laugh of anybody I've ever met in my life. Uh, and he's going back on the road. He plugs his dates, and I'm going to plug mine. Um, go to andrewsantino.com. I'm going to be uh, in Atlantic City at the end of the month. And then I'm going to Houston, Madison, Boston, Nashville. Um, we're, we're And we're adding so many more dates. I don't even know what they are, but... Uh, just go to andrewsantino.com to find all that stuff. If you want more of the solo, the one pods, the solo one Cheeto chats, go to patreon.com slash whiskey ginger podcast. That's where that stuff lives. You're looking for merch just down in the merch bar down below or at andrewsantinostore.com. But come see me live, baby. We're getting back out there. I'm so excited to be doing stand up again. Andrewsantino.com is where you get them tickets. Enough rambling from me. Let's go to the episode. In here, we pour whiskey, 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 whiskey. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Ginger. My guest today is one of my favorite people on earth. I say that for all my guests, but I mean it once again today. For real, for real, for real, it's Ryan Sickler, the sick dog. Hey, baby. Welcome. You're the only welcome. guy I let call me the sick dog. The sick dog. Welcome. Uh, I want to. I'm going to crack you off some Woodford Reserve. Actually, yeah, you know please. what? You t- you pour how you how you want. I'll just have a little here. Today. A little, just a little something, something sure. for you. Look, 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 look. Having a little Woodford start, Reserve we'll start today. Start with a little sipper. Yeah, why not? Tell me what's going on. You said you're going. You're, you took your daughter where? Because I want to hear all about it. Oh yeah, I'll tell you. Cheers. First, Cheers, bro. brother. Cheers, man. See, you, you see, made eye contact. Well, like I was a about gr- to say eye contact. When people don't do everything. that, doesn't that weird you out? Yep. You're like, what's what's like, what's going on inside? I don't even have parents who raised you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so tell good. me, uh, what's been going on? First of all, we lost some soldiers in the in the comedy pandemic war. Um, I, I'm glad that uh, Segura and them left because we didn't want them here anyway. Nope. I said it. I said, I don't want them here. I don't even know why they're here. I remember when you called Scoot. and you were like, thank God they're gone. I said, skedaddle. <laughs> Take all those losers <laughs> with you, dude. <laughs> so then, uh, but I was glad that you stayed. I heard that, you know, like there was rumors that you might be choice. taken off. Who the fuck? No, I, what I said to Christina on a show one time was. Yeah, she perpetuated Since you it. all have the money. Yeah. Get down there. Let us know if it's worth. I don't have their money. Yeah, right. You let me know if it's worth. This, it. this is like uh, you you're know? like you're like the queen when they send out those explorers and they're mm-hmm. like, go see if there's land. I'm looking they at all die. Segura. They're like the Marines. Right. You go over, do the recon, come Tell back. Us. I'm the Navy. Right. I'll sail over when <laughs> shit's good. <laughs> It'll take me a while to get there, but yeah, you, you just get, send send us a pigeon and let me know. <laughs> yeah, I dude, I went down there. I was down in um. I did Austin, and then I did Dallas. I did shows in Dallas, but I stopped by Austin to check it out. But it was exactly what I thought it was. I mean, look, it's a great city. Look at me. I... Hey. <laughs> nah. It's whatever. I, it's fine, dude. It's fine. I've only been during South by Southwest. Me too. So, so, oh, I, matter of fact, too. you did the craft feast with us I there. did. I did. Matter I did fact. South by, and then I would do... You and Baron Davis. My boy. And then I would do... Uh, what's the other one? Moon Towers. Yeah. I did that twice. And then they got mad because I went back. To South by, oh, I didn't and know like you, you can't do, do both. That. I didn't know that. Well, we did anyway, but they threw a big fit. I was like, it's still selling tickets. What? I don't. What's the difference? I'm supporting the city and the thing, but I think they just got butthurt because I went to promote the first season of I'm Dying up here there, mm-hmm. and Moon Tower was like, we thought we could rely on you to just, and I was like, bro, I, I, it's, who? Ca- nobody cares. Fans are happy that you're there. They don't care when you're there, or what you're there for. I think that's just a that's that's an internal problem that they've got, but. Whatever, well, I, what I was getting at basically was me being there during that time. I'm sure I'm seeing the best of the best. Yeah. They're decking the whole city out. Yeah. Everything's going on. Yeah. I need to go see a weekend like a fucking, I need to see a wet, I need to see a Monday, Monday to Wednesday. Yes. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That's Let what me I need to see. Show me what's yeah, really going yeah, on. That's what I need to see. Because that's really, that's the truth about all this. You know, it's like when you come to a city, when you do a weekend somewhere and you're like, you know, this is Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It's popping. But you know, if you hung out for a day or two after, it's a dead zone. Yeah, and you know and that's maybe what's the going reason on it's poppins because there ain't shit to do during the week, right? And you're coming it's you. to town. Yeah, <laughs> it's you. Yeah, but it was fine. But I have a it daughter. I'm not going anywhere. I'm here till she's 18. I'm not. No matter what happens. You said before the show that blue I'm is your here. color. She told you blue is my your color. My daughter told me it. She's well, because like, you're skin. You get that color. olive skin. 
I'm Italian. I don't have the last name, but I got the blood. My whole so I have the last name, but I yeah. don't have the blood. See, my, my how do you have the last name without the blood? That would be your well, father. My, yeah, no, my dad no, is Italian, but the, the, but this this took over. Yeah, it did. It, it looked dominated. like Ireland, man. It's yeah, sad. It did. I swear to God, dude. I when I play golf, they they make fun of me that I because I spray four or five times when we golf. It's only three hours in the sun. I went sun. fishing yesterday <laughs> from 6.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. and I sprayed once. Once? Are you out of your mind? That would kill me. I'd be dead. 6.30 to 3 p.m. 6.30 a to 3 p.m. and I Holy sprayed one shit. time. Yeah, and I'm not looking at me. This was yesterday. Bro, that's nine little... hours you were in the sun. Yeah, nine hours. If I'm in the sun for nine hours, <laughs> call the funeral home. I'll throw you over. Let him know I'm you. coming. He's burnt up. Yeah, dude, I have to spray up so much. You one time, and that's good for you. Does your daughter have skin like you? Nah, she's got fair skin like her mom. She gets she gets burnt up. Mm -hmm. Right, so you got to put like those. Uh, like, was she out there the whole time with you fishing? No, no, no. I went with my buddy yesterday. She's in school now. Fine, let's. Oh, oh, saying, that's right. Man. They're in. They're doing. You the think thing I'm not there. gonna? You but school's back. I'm going fucking fishing. I've been fishing <laughs> like four times since. Uh, Where did you go? You said Lake what? Castaic. What uh, is that? It's just like five ten. Well, it's about ten minutes north of Valencia. No, I got a Oh, I know exactly where There's it is. an overflow where you can fish 24-7 on the east side of the bank. So you can go, we used to go night fishing. I've been here since the late 90s. So I, I see used it. to go night fishing down there all the time. But then there's the main lake where you can pull up, rent uh -huh. a 14-foot aluminum boat for 65 bucks for the whole fucking day. A little eight horsepower on the back. Wow. And just pull out there and fish the fucking lake. So I went and did it yesterday. See, I like that. I, I went out to uh, Lake Kachuma. Mm -hmm. Is where I go camping. Do you know where that is? Mm -mm, where is that? By um, Solvang, okay, I Ojai. Know where that is. You're yeah, a little bit more west area. of where you are. Yeah. But I got to tell you, dude, you go to those spots, you feel like you are out of LA. But not just, you're literally out of LA. This is 30 minutes north of LA. And it's, it's so redneck world. country. I love it. Yeah, I'm me too. Me. I, I love it up there. I'm, Would you think about moving up there? I, I have thought about it, but the only way in and out is the five. And if there's an accident or anything it's like over. that, you're fucked. That's like people that live you're in Malibu. Fucked. I don't get it. You have one road in, one road That's out. It. I mean, you're you can fucked. take the canyons. Good luck. But then everyone's doing that if they're if you're fucked. Right. Right. And then you you Caitlyn or uh, Bruce Jenner and kill somebody. Yeah. That's so funny. I, I said right by the proper name, but back then she was Bruce. Was it? I thought it was Kate. No, I thought it no, was no, no. Caitlyn. Oh, it was? Because everyone had the joke about immediately you become a woman and you're a terrible driver. Oh. I feel like there was that going. I thought he, I thought he killed somebody <laughs> and then switched. Because that's a good way out. Man, hold Boom. on a second. And make you're the switch. You're onto something there. Yeah, Can you I, fucking say, I, like... I, I would do that if look, I... Look, Bruce well, Jenner killed that motherfucker. But I'm let's Caitlin, see. you know? Uh, Bruce Jenner car accident. See, I'm telling you, I think it was Bruce Jenner that did it. Jenner 68 was involved in a four-car four car pileup. Jenner's still Jenner's last name. Yeah. Oh, no. It's, well, then it says... She was not charged with a crime. Caitlyn Jenner forced to pay eight hundred grand. God, eight hundred grand for killing somebody—that's not that bad. That's not. No. Didn't you think it would be way more? Way more. Someone's life should be worth more than eight hundred. Eight hundred grand. Yeah. I just, for some reason, for sure, thought that would be in the millions when you clip somebody. I mean, I hit a human being once. You, a person didn't kill him. You hit a person. I hit a human. Let's talk about it because my mom hit a kid one time. We'll talk. Oh, about I hit it. a man. <laughs> oh, hit a kid. <laughs> Your mom hit a child. It was. Listen, my mom and I have a checkered past, and uh, <laughs> I will have to sit here and say that in her defense, it really was not her fault. I mean, you're you're at fault because Bro, you're driving, but it's her fault. I'm going to tell you why it wasn't. Okay, go you ahead. Hear the story. Yeah. So we, I'm from Maryland, and there used to be these stores. Everybody would go to, you know, our lower middle class would go to Hanover, Pennsylvania. Yeah. And Hanover, Hanover had a bunch of stores. Right. You know, you like get clothing shop. stores. Yeah, a little, yeah. little area to go shopping. Yeah. Outlets, I guess early outlets or whatever. And we're driving, we're driving uh west. I'll never forget this. My mom's in the front, her girlfriend's up here. I'm in the back, and I want to put my seatbelt on, but they tell me you're not allowed to wear your seatbelt because four you have to sit back there. So mm. four, my two brothers, and then there's one more on the way back. Remember that, by the way? You could fit six got six yep. kids on a in a Station. And we were in a Ford Escort. Bro, it's station wagons. Ford I Escort. used to take station wagons and they would have one long seatbelt across all the kids. Remember that shit? It was insane. It was just one, it was like one it's seven foot belt. That, no, it's so funny. So, so uh, we're in a there. beige Ford Escort. Hot, fresh. Headed west. Yep. And this little boy, he's probably 10 or 11. We all see him. He's here on the sidewalk and he's crossing the street. He looks the direction we're headed. So he looks to his right. Right. Never bothers to swivel back to the left. He was British, bro. He looked to the right <laughs> only. 
He's like, he's checking to the I right don't know. to see he this sounded cause. Like he was American when he was crying. I didn't hear an accent. <laughs> I didn't hear an accent when he was screaming for help. My leg is broken. <laughs> My legs are broken. Like that so wait, he looks right. So he looks right and mm-hmm. doesn't bother to look th- in our direction mm-hmm. and steps out into traffic and my mom slams on the brake. I'm only laughing because the kid ended up being okay. His head hits the fucking fender. He goes <laughs> under the tires. Boom, boom, boom. No. Over the, yeah, bro, you ran over, over his legs. Him? Oh, my God, bro. And then I pop up, and I'm looking out the back window of the escort, and I just see him crawling like his legs are dead. <laughs> and he's going, and he's crawling back. I'm like, oh, my God, we just hit this kid. So we pull over, and the poor kid, his mother was at the he, – so what happened was – Where he, was she? She was inside the laundry. Mat. They uh, were at a laundromat. She asked him to go across the street and get something, or cigarettes. he wanted to go probably go get my numbers, cigarettes. Play my, numbers. play my numbers, and uh, he didn't look. And she saw it. She saw the whole thing. She comes oh, out shit. and starts beating him, and because he scared. after he got and hit, his legs aren't even working, bro. <laughs> she's working him. And I'm, we're all like, whoa, 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 he's picking him up by the and collars. Like, I saw everything. He didn't look both ways. So when the cop got there she said my son fucked up he didn't look both ways he's lucky to be alive wow. so my mom's off the hook that sounds like my mom would do some shit like that right that's so then, what you get type yep. of shit so the cops like uh okay was there did everyone have their seatbelt on the car i was like i didn't he's like why didn't you have your seatbelt i go well i wanted to wear my seatbelt but i was told i wasn't allowed to put it on because there were gonna be four of us in this bag snitch <laughs> you a snitch bro your mom should have beat you in I front go, of the cop. lucky something didn't happen to us back here there's a lot of <laughs> danger for kids when we ran over him, officer, my head hit the roof, and it was a little <laughs> uncomfortable. But forever, there was a, a a little, a nice chunk where his head bent that fender up a little bit. And we would, I'd always run up to it, set my head there, and look at my mom like, hey, you gonna remember, do that? remember this? Remember this one? Remember <laughs> How this? old was the kid? <laughs> He's like 10 or 11. Bro, my mom hits stuff, not people, thank God. But things, she hits, she, my mom has run over our mailbox four times. <laughs> four fucking times. Fucking it's in the same place. It doesn't move. It's not like a. It's not like a What's video game. What's her problem? It does the shit, dude. Because you know what? Our driveway. My parents' driveway <laughs> is crazy steep at the beginning, right? Mm-hmm. It's like this, and then it's steep and kind of. It kind of goes up that way a little bit. It's it's straight, but it. The way she comes out, she has to cut really hard. If she doesn't cut hard, you're in the grass, right? Because it's narrow at that part. And in the mornings, she's going to work, and every single time, it's like the same. It's like almost like if she's in a rush, you know it's going to happen. And she knocks that bitch clean Runs over right with the over. car every time. Does she just take you, off too? Yeah, what are you going to do? You can't, what can you do about it? It's over now, right? Like, is, is she's going to get out? My dad's going to come out, be angry. It's like, what's it worth? Just hit the mailbox, keep rolling. We'll handle it later. We used to, uh, there used to be these kids uh, in our high school that were like, they were the dirty kids and they lived up on a hill and they just didn't <laughs> Sounds have. Sounds like a Theo Vaughn Sup- bit. <laughs> supposedly, they probably were the, the Theo Vaughn. The dirty kids on that hill, man. But they would get suspended for not showering. Things like coming into school. Like, I've never heard this before. Me either. Like they, they would, were stanking for that For hygiene, bad. yeah. Because they were poor, huh? Yes. Oh, that's sad as it's shit. It's sad. But, yeah. But they... They were like, you could shower here in the get a hose and the but here in high school we have oh showers. yeah in the athletic room, go and yeah. shower we'll we'll make sure no but go shower clean up but he wouldn't his older brother too so mm. we used to go take M eighties and blow their mailbox up back in the day when we would go back to you know mailbox <laughs> baseball when Stand by Me came out the whole blowing up the poor people's mailbox the stinky kids <laughs> yeah that that's a nice so mail. mean they would go blow up the mailbox right. <laughs> You're blowing up the, the poor kid's stinky mailbox. These motherfuckers have so much trauma in their life. And, and you're like, guess what? We're going to so we. fuck up their we letters. We had no parents. We were shit kids, too. Okay, We were shit, too. We had our share done to us. Mm-hmm. So we uh, we blow this mailbox up. And we would blow we blow it up like four times. And the okay. next time we came back, these motherfuckers took a five-gallon bucket, a white one, you know, a standard mm-hmm. white one, and just nailed it to a piece of wood and just shoved it in the fucking <laughs> That's a mailbox. <laughs> and it was legally a mailbox. Of course, bro. They had a flag on it. They yeah. were like, if you're going to keep blowing this up, y'all going to go <laughs> fuck yourself. And so we threw one in there just ceremoniously. <laughs> it went, boom. You know, that, yeah. and it didn't do shit to no. that bucket. Those nah. buckets are indestructible. Yeah. You throw those old ma- those old aluminum ones where you put the little slanted number gold sticker. Oh. You know what I'm talking oh, about? Yeah. The red flag. Oh, yeah. Those things, you put an M80 in them. Dude, Shrapnel. The, the sides blow up and yeah. the back shoots all off. Oh, it's so great. <laughs> so great. It's so great. We did mailbox 
box baseball. I remember those days too. And that was just so cruel, so fucked up to do, man. It was so mean to do. Well, we got in as, trouble. A, as someone that has a homeowner now, you're right. like, this motherfucker. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's all coming back. Well, all, yeah, it is all coming back. Yeah. It's like egg in houses yeah. or, 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 you know what they did too? Um, there's kids in the neighborhood that are teenagers, you know, they're like 13, 14 or whatever. And every single Halloween, you know, I pull in the pumpkins at night. I'm pulling the pumpkins at night like a dad. Because I know what they, because yep. every time oh. across the street, this guy has a beautiful house. He's got like a really nice display. They got money, you know, mm -hmm. and he's got a pumpkin display. And I'm sitting there with my coffee at night, like waiting. I'm like, here they come. They're smashing these motherfuckers. I mean, they Definitely. smash them in the street. Yeah, right so, like, in front of your house. Oh, you yeah. See it. yeah. And, I, and I was drinking. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm loving it because my pumpkins are safe next to me. <laughs> my $2 pumpkins. Man, I yeah, remember. we used to do all that dumb shit. Now I know what it feels like to be the guy that has to pay for the shit. We had a neighbor one time that had one of those. I don't know how they grew it. It just grew like ridiculous. You could sit on it and take pictures, like one of those pumpkins, you know, that just this is in Maryland. freakishly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Patch out in their yeah. yard. So they put it out front and they decorate it and shit. Mm. And the next day we drive by and my dad sees it. It's just smack. It's just crushed. And my pieces, dad's yeah. like, man, that's a shame. That big ass pumpkin. <laughs> and I'll never forget. I look over my shoulder. I see my brother and my, our friend in the neighborhood just die. And I was like, you motherfucker. <laughs> they did it. You fucking did it. They did that. We did so much dumb, mean <laughs> shit. I mean, we like for no reason. You just, but also you're bored as a kid and you're, and, but you're it's, dumb too. We well, did a dumb. lot of dumb, well, we're fun dumb. shit. Yeah. And also because pre internet, man. Like we grew up pre internet. So there wasn't much to do. I mean, you had to, it was like go to a movie, meet at like a fast food joint. You know what I mean? Go somewhere to get high, go, go to someone's garage. It was like you ran out of options. You wanted to go fuck something up. It was like See, you had we to. had, we were the place that you could come do that because we had from 16, from my freshman year through my senior, or excuse me, sophomore year through my senior year, we had no parents. So we were the house that you came to and spent the night on Monday. Because they were working. It's, no, because my dad had died and my oh, right, mom when your dad passed away, us, and she left us alone. She didn't want us. We got we moved into her place, this little two bedroom apartment. So she lived with her boyfriend. She stayed with him like Monday to Sunday. She'd come home on Sunday, grab some clothes, do laundry, and bounce. Damn. And we would just take care of ourselves. But everyone. How old were you at that time? Sixteen. Who was the oldest? My, well, my brother's a twin, so we're both 16. And my younger brother, my dad was buried on his 13th birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he was 13 when all this went down. So two 16-year-olds and a 13-year-old trying to take care of themselves, making sure we get to school. And we did. Who Never made suspended, food? no, nothing. We just ate, we ordered pizza all the time. Yeah, you just we ate, ate whatever food, you could. Garbage. It's, yeah. what, it's born into me. It's garbage. You still eat garbage? Still, sometimes, for sure. I What's still your eat sucker? Garbage. What's your sucker I shit? I love a good double cheeseburger at McDonald's oh, with no bro. pickles and a small fry bro. stacked on it. And the amount of times that people have, that. you know, they do that thing where they're like, oh, I don't eat fast food or I don't eat it. It's mm -hmm. like, I'll never give up McDonald's. No. And Chick fil A. I love Chick fil A too. My, my mom used to take me, you know, when. When my before my mom got remarried and it was just my mom and I living in the city, my mom would take me to McDonald's and we'd get the single cheeseburgers, you know, mm -hmm. just the singles and milkshakes, and she'd rip it in half and we would dunk the cheeseburgers in oh, the milkshakes. Shit. And I vividly remember doing that in the park and like you still do it? I do. Oh, absolutely. See, my father showed me the cheeseburger absolutely. or the fries on the cheeseburger. And yeah. I, to this day, I still do that's that. that. Well, that's such a clutch move, by the way. But yeah, I still do it once in a while just because it reminds me of my mom. But Dunkin' Fries in the shake, by the way, yeah, it's a must. An absolute must. But when people are like, I never eat that shit. I'm like, dude, I'm as healthy as I can be. I'm going to get fucking McDonald's sometimes. Yeah, I Stop remember playing. watching Shannon Sharp when the Ravens did... Um, what was it called? Uh, remember the series they did for a bunch of football? Well, how come I can't think Which, of it? What are you Hard Knocks. About? Oh, Hard, oh, Hard, Hard Knocks. Knocks. Yeah, the Ravens yeah. were the first team to do it back in like 2000. I remember seeing Shannon Sharp, who's still to this day, looks like a Greek god. I mean, he's just had ja, 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 ja. a bag of McDonald's. And I was like, if this motherfucker can work out like that. And then Michael Phelps eating 8,000 calories a day in their Big Macs. And, and well, just, they eat a lot of shit, but too. But we don't do that. Yeah, well, because they need, they need the fat differential, mm -hmm. right? They need that. Nutritionists will tell you, too. If you're just eating... Look, the, the difference is obvious. Tom Brady it, oh, doesn't eat nightshades and is a hardcore vegan and has had an insane, insane diet for years. Tom Brady, arguably, is just not a strong... Like, the muscle definition isn't there. He's very... He's a very in-shape person. Yes. But strength-wise... looks wise, very average. Yeah, but strength-wise, no yeah. chance. You see these other dudes, they need high levels of fat and then, lo like, low levels of fat and then super high levels of... They need all this shit to fuck with your body. They always tell you that. You have to trick it. So the more athletes I hang out with, the more I know that their diet habits are insane.
Yeah. Like, it, uh, like all over the map. I, I was so like, sometimes they're like perfect for six months and then they'll fuck off and stuff like or, that. Or they're or, just like, or they'll do like, a, I can't, I don't want to say his name because it's mm -hmm. not for me to tell, but like, it, well, he was FaceTiming me the other day and was eating a, a, a fucking salad bowl of pasta, like a salad <laughs> bowl. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, for mixing yeah. greens, bro, <laughs> filled with pasta. I was like, that's three boxes. <laughs> like, that's three boxes of pasta in that bitch. And he was just going, like, I mean, just going at it. It was meat sauce and all this shit. And then he had gar a huge thing of garlic bread. And he's probably 250, 260. He's a big guy. You know, he's a pro. But like, in my mind, I'm like, you eat, isn't, aren't you going to gain seven pounds tonight, tonight doing that? Yeah, but he'll lose it in the morning. Right. So they we need like this shit. crazy shit. My know? mom would take us to McDonald's 15 minutes before soccer practice. Oh, like, yeah. This is what you're eating. Yeah. And we would... <laughs> We wouldn't save it. We would shove to. I would. My go-to back then was always the double cheeseburger meal. Two cheeseburgers, so good. Fries and a drink, so good. Coke, and then you're going out and running wind sprints and shit with all that in your fucking stomach. Mm -mm. We used to wrestle and cut weight, and as soon as we tipped the scale, as soon as we were done a match, we would order a pizza right. and by ourselves. Just murder gah, that. Gah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Starving. We had that in days. basketball. We'd have yeah. pizza parties or whatever, like mm -hmm. that they would tell you to binge binge pizza the day before uh, a game that happened at night because you'll you'll sleep with all these carbs and the next day we have, we'd have workouts. So then by the time game came, you could use all this stored up carbohydrate energy. Whether that was true or not, didn't do anything for my white ass, but you know. <laughs> Yeah, pasta parties never <laughs> Nothing for me. me. But I mean, it was just like, I'm like, this has got to be for the real athletes. In here, we pour whiskey, whiskey, whiskey. Hey, I've talked about mental health on this show a lot. Uh, I've been very open about it that I think everybody needs to talk to somebody. Uh, whatever varying levels of therapy works for you. I do think it's very important to go talk to someone about something. Uh, that's, uh, you know, getting in the way of your happiness, of your success in life and of you moving forward through tough times. Look, it's been tough times for all of us the past year or so. We're all going to get back to square one, and BetterHelp is the way to do it. Uh, BetterHelp is going to um, assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating in under 48 hours, which I think is impressive. Um, it's not a crisis line. It's not a self-help line. Uh, we've said this before. You can log into your account anywhere at any time. These are legit licensed professionals. Um, and it's professional counseling done securely online, which you can do from anywhere, which I think is huge. You know, you don't have to be at one place because I think traditional counseling is a little tough. I don't want to go to the office. It feels weird. There's a highlights magazine and very odd lighting, right? And everyone's staring at you uncomfortably. It doesn't feel good. It's always unusually cold. This you can do from the comfort of your own home or wherever you are, uh, which I think is, is incredible. And there's so many services. It's available for clients worldwide. And they're committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches. They make it very easy to change counselors if need be. Uh, you can read some of their reviews at betterhelp.com slash reviews. Uh, and go to betterhelp.com slash whiskey. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P. And join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of the mental health with the help of an experienced professional. Um, this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Whiskey Ginger listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash whiskey. Again, 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash whiskey. It's a great deal. Talk to someone. Feel better. A lot of guys have a tough time getting the blood flow down in your mojo. A little bit hard sometimes. ED is a common thing. Uh, it's, uh, it's tough. And with Roman, you can get help, okay? A lot of people suffer from it. Nothing embarrassing about it. You can get a free online uh, evaluation and ongoing care for ED. All the comfort and privacy of your own house. U.S. licensed healthcare professional is going to work with you to the best treatment plan. The whole process is straightforward and discreet. Getting started is easy. Go to GetRoman.com slash whiskey and complete an online visit. Take care of your ED without leaving the comfort of your own home. You can complete an online visit today and connect with a healthcare professional and take care of what's going on. Look, a lot of guys just can't get the old red rocket boosters uh, thrusting like they used to. There's nothing wrong with this. This is something that millions and millions of people suffer from, uh, and there's an easy way to take care of it with Roman. Uh, it is, it's discreet, which I think is wonderful. They send it to your house so no one knows. You don't got to go out in public and feel weird about it. And you don't have to tell anybody if you don't want to tell anybody about it. It's your business, baby. It's your genital business. And also, so many people suffer from it, so it's nothing to be embarrassed about. You know what I mean? Sometimes you get a flat tire. Sometimes the sink gets clogged. Sometimes the door squeaks. Uh, sometimes a window's got a whistle in it. <whistles> you got to fix these issues. This is just one more issue that you got to fix. And it's a little bit off in the bedroom. Don't worry about it. Problems arise in life. 
you know, fix this and make this thing arise again. How about that? Boom. Go to GetRoman.com slash whiskey right now. If you go to GetRoman.com slash whiskey, you'll get $15 off your first month. And uh, it's about time you take care of your ED. Remember, get started today. You'll save $15 on your first order of ED treatment. Go to GetRoman.com slash whiskey. Ginger. I like gingers. Yeah, I just, I guess over the years, like I'm trying to be more conscious of what I put in my body, but I'm telling you, man, it's too hard. It's too hard anymore to care. The pandemic too was tough that I was like, I'm just going to eat whatever the fuck I want. Yeah. And you're just ordering because you can't go anywhere. Yeah. They're telling shit. you not to yeah. leave. So right. you're ordering. I'm not going to get unhealthy shit. Right. When I lost my taste and smell, uh, you did. How many days did you have it gone? Days. I still don't have it. What, today? Bro, I'm five months into no smell and taste is still fucked up. I can't smell. I, I can't smell. And I don't know when my armpits stink. I don't know Shit. any. I, and I didn't miss it. I didn't miss it at first because if you 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 remember how bad it got out here. Yeah, if you yeah, would have yeah. told me, hey, for one year you don't have, you lose your smell, but you don't have to step step foot in the hospital. You don't have to get on oxygen. You don't have to do anything. Right. I would have taken it. Yeah, it's a good trade off. Okay, but this is about a month ago now. I'm five months in because I was in December. We're five months in, and. I'm sleeping. My daughter and I are sleeping. And at like 3.30 in the morning, the smoke detector goes off. And I'm like, fuck. And immediately I woke up because it scared the fuck out of me. But within a millisecond, my first thought wasn't, oh, fuck, there's a fire. It was like, oh, fuck, I can't smell smoke. Wow. And then the next day or two days later, there was like some uh, Amber Alert type text that came on our phones talking about this neighborhood that was being evacuated uh, because of a natural gas leak. And I was like, fuck. I can't. If there's a leak in my home, I you can't smell know. that. And well, that's, that's why you when, got those detectors in the house, though, right? That's when I missed my fucking smell for the first so time. So five months now? Five months I thought it came in. back for some reason. I've been looking at remedies online and tried all the voodoo and... Nothing. I asked my doctor, is this shit gone forever? And he's like, no. But he said it like he's not 100% sure. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, I don't know. He's like, you'll tell me. Did you get vaccinated too? Did you do that? I did. Yeah. Me too. I yeah. got the antibody and the vaccine. I got I got shit for it, but I was like, I'm definitely getting vaccinated. I'm not catching that shit again. Fuck that. No. What do you I, mean? I, I, I lost get the it flu for, shot. Yeah. Same. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I lost it for four days, taste and smell, and and I got depressed because I was like, man, I wonder how long it's gonna last. And look, look, compared to you, I'm lucky. But four days, I didn't know. By the third day, I'm like. Well, what am I going to eat? You know, I was doing that thing and I would have, and this is weird, weird for me. I never liked Chick-fil-A, but I would get those little chicken filet nuggets, those little nuggets. The grilled ones or yeah, the regular ones? I got them both Yeah, hell because yeah. it was just like familiar that it tasted, sm you know what I mean? It was like the yes, texture was familiar. I, thank you. That's all I can tell. Yeah. I, you can put a plate of cheese out in front of me and I can tell you, obviously I've been eating for 48 years, but if yeah. if I wasn't, I could say... That's cheese, but I could not tell you the difference between cheddar, Swiss, nothing. But nothing so, so the taste is a little there. There's a little bit there. Like, like do you I taste know, this? I can taste this a little bit. Yeah. I know it's stronger than it is, but I can taste it a little bit. I've been doing these little dumb. <laughs> this is so stupid. I know people don't hear about this. Rehabs like where they tell you to sniff coffee. So I'm I'm banging coffee bags at night, trying <laughs> to train my smell to come back and shit, dude. It's is that what they say to do? <clears throat> that's one of them. <clears throat> they say to also like. <laughs> Excuse me. You got um, it again, bro. You coming in? Cologne. Here I got it again. Oh my god! But I can smell. Yeah. Um, cologne, things like that, to try to train your memory. Because I've also read things that some people that things they love, like like detergent, for instance, uh, laundry detergent, yeah. smells like rancid, like uh, dead flesh. And Does shit. it smell bad to you? Stuff? I can't smell anything. So nothing, nothing has a negative. Yeah. Nope. I can't. It's so smell weird that they it, it took it, that took that shit away from us. Mm -hmm. The olfactories are gone. Ol so when right. you eat. Is it not satisfying? It's not. It's not that satisfying. And I've been getting depressed about it lately. A bunch of shit. You know, I gained weight just, yeah. but now I'm going back to eating, you know, way better again. I'm already dropping LBs, but I just, uh, I figured, fuck it. If I can't, you know, if I can't taste it, I might as well just eat. They're going to find out. Good in a, shit. They're going to find out in a little bit that there's a trick. That's a simple trick. I saw this guy on. You know what I mean? uh, yeah, like, smoke I'm gonna a, tell smoke you. Smoke a one. cigarette upside down. <laughs> they're, they're like, you got it. There's some fucking chiropractor in Arizona that I'm convinced has paid these people to come in and say, "No, nah, it worked." Where he's f just literally flicking the back of your head, like right here, and they swear they can smell. <laughs> <laughs> smell like just a, little... a flick on the back like, of the head. And oh, my like, oh my god! Oh my god! And within like two days, 
And there's all these people like I couldn't smell, and then he did this thing and flicked me, and I was like, yeah. You know what I do sometimes to make sure I still have my smell because it weird, it mentally weirded me out. I'll smell my hands. Really? It's something simple. Like you can smell your skin. I can't smell when I wash my. I know I miss the way my daughter's hair smells. Oh, that's like sad I miss as shit. shit. Like that. That breaks my soul. It breaks my soul. But at least you got your eyeballs, bro. I got my eyeballs. I'd rather I got lose my, my smell than my vision. For I, sure. Listen, of all the senses, I would take smell. Yeah, it can be gone. It would have to be. Are you still smoking, by the way? Weed. Yeah. Oh God. But can yeah. you, but can you take? There's no flavor. No smell. No nothing. Right. There's no smell or. or because taste. weed is so potent on the tongue. Yeah. Right. Like when you and smoke in a the joint, no, like the shit out here is just like woo. Yeah, and I like the cheese weeds. I like sativa. You like so stanky. I, I like stank cheese. I like I yeah. can smell what I like, and I can't smell right now. So I don't know. I have to go to my old, my old tried and true brand. You'd be easy to trick for a dealer. Yeah. So, bro, this is bomb as shit. He could spray it with whatever the fuck they want, and I wouldn't know. <laughs> Formaldehyde all that Dude. shit. Have you losing it? See, I I all but gave up weed, but I had a I had a big joint a week ago i got just ripped for no reason i just was like i want to get high because i hadn't gotten high in so long yeah you left it for me in in the hotel the last time oh was yeah a while that's ago. right awesome. and where were yeah. we where was phoenix. it phoenix phoenix and yeah, yeah house phoenix. Of comedy yeah you house, left it yeah. in the condo and said do not touch for sickler <laughs> for sickler only baby yeah by the bedside so you stop smoking why i think of a lot of things because i run yeah and 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 i was just like well so the 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 pandemic thing was like the lungs so I was like, if this affected my lungs and I can't run, I definitely don't want to smoke anymore. So an edible once in a while was always cool then. Oh, I see. Just to take away the, I just wanted to take away the lung stuff because I did get panicked. When I got, when I heard I had Corona, my first thought was, well, if I can't run, I'm really going to break down emotionally because it was the one thing that really does get me out of my own head. Mm -hmm. I can just disappear into space for a few hours. But, you know, thank God I had no lung stuff. And it just kind of put me in a weird mental space where I was like, I smoked for years. Oh, you were a cigarette smoker? Yeah, I used to love smoking oh, cigarettes. Oh, I loved it. Yeah, I hit it like crazy. I didn't, I just, well, I did it in college and I did it a lot afterwards and it would just come and go. But I knew I didn't like it because I would hide it all the time. I, see, I was yeah. embarrassed by it. Right. I didn't want to be a smoker, but I really enjoyed what I got from it. The nicotine, but nicotine is so good in your blood i know i you get it you're like oh it feels so relieving it's like a nice passive Look, thing i i could never smoke i tried smoking yeah a, a little puff would wreck me for like three days a three foot bong hit no problem but the, right the fucking what is it carcinogens yeah in cigarettes yeah. just wreck me my body my well they're, skin. They're, they're real bad for you i mean it's it's crazy to think that like this is why i, I was talking to segura about this that like some people could smoke forever doesn't affect them yeah my my father my biological father smoked, I don't know, 30 some odd, 40 years. I have no idea. He goes to the doctor and they're like, your lungs are good. I have a cousin. And then someone smokes for five years and they're like, they're, you're dead. you got cancer. I have a cousin who's a paranoid schizophrenic who smokes a carton of cigarettes in three days. Let's get him on the show. And uh, <laughs> I should get him on. I don't know if he can keep it together. I'm worried about Wait, him. Wait, but paranoid schizophrenic, that's getting help or no? Yes and no. I think yeah. he is in a hospital now, but there are times when they'll put him on meds and they'll he'll, he'll halfway house. Yeah. There's, there's hospitals. There's halfway houses. Right. All these things over the years. Thank you. Yeah. And um, he would sit and when i'm telling you he would smoke cigarettes he smokes like this and he doesn't take that motherfucker for any farther than this right oh it's, it's it's just continuous non-stop yeah but he's been doing this for decades his mom my my great aunt dead from she's, smoking she smoked forever got breast cancer died mm. this motherfucker shouldn't he shouldn't even have a throat left to pull the the just right you know what is it was it 20 packs in a carton uh 10 no i think 20 cigarettes in a pack 10 packs in a carton maybe so what are you talking about two 200 cigarettes in three days he's smoking <laughs> it's insane it's it might be less than that he rips them he's not smoking he's smoking like shit that says cigarettes you know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> that's the no brand for, no. that's like my uncle and my he's uncle still alive he used to smoke uh unfiltered pall malls God. army army shit well army, he, he, yeah. he, he was in the military so it's like for sure you're gonna He's smoking whatever they gave you. Right, yeah. And they gave you self rollies. You know, you'd have to roll them up yourself. So, like, I remember, too, watching him take tobacco out of his mouth. Spit it out. Yeah, because there was no filter. I never understood. I was like, how come some people don't do not do that? And then you get older, you go, oh, oh, there's filters on bought cigarettes. He would just buy them and roll them. Did you ever dip or do tobacco? I did dip, you dude. You look I, like a guy at dip. I used to love dipping. Yeah. Well, I started dipping because I, I, uh, I was a valet in college, and you couldn't smoke. <laughs> 
Hold on, dude. Give it to me, Papa. You're the first motherfucker I've ever heard to dip because he was a valet. Everybody <laughs> else I knew did it because they either played ball or they hunted. <laughs> no, bro. You're I'm, the first dipping valet. That should be your character. I, I smoked. I smoked the dipping valet. <laughs> so you could only you could keep up your nicotine habit by dipping. Cause well, you because the, smoke. the the guy that owned the company. <laughs> said that they were getting complaints that valets were smoking uh you know like if i would have someone sub the station i could go behind the restaurant and have a cigarette right. and come back but then people would you know, smell it when you get in their, their car, car whatever, but sure. we left the windows down i didn't believe that i just think somebody saw us yeah, smoking and, and they were snitching us right. but so i put away the cigarettes and i would get annoyed i'd be sitting there you know and you literally when i was a valet in college i'd sit for three hours with nothing you know for the for the post dinner rush or whatever so you'd have to be there till midnight I'd be bored out of my fucking mind, you know? And at some point I was like, well, if I can't smoke, I'm going to dip. So I, my, my roommate at the time dipped, he only dipped. I mean, he smoked sometimes, but he dipped all day long. So I took a pack of, of, of skull from him. I mean, I took a, a can of skull from him and I brought it and I'll never forget, bro. I had no idea how much to put in. I had only known cigarettes. Right. So I'm thinking, well, this can't be as strong as cigarettes. It's loose. So I grab like this. I grab, a, you know, like this much. Yeah. I just grab. It's probably. It wasn't a pinch. It was like half a tin. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know. Nah, I had no nah, idea. Nah. It was about a half a tin. <laughs> and and I had always seen. I'd always seen instead of instead of front lip. He he went yeah, back. back here. Yeah. Well, oh, so I'm God thinking there's a lot of damn. room. So I put a big ass half a tin back there. And, you know, I'm just sitting there with a the big hoss. Your eyes burning and shit. Dude, <laughs> I let it sit uh, yeah. for about five minutes five minutes Ugh. and then finally i throw this thing out and the head rush was so heavy from all that nicotine that i threw up i puked all i i, I, I right next to the valet stand I, I was at buca de beppo i'll never forget and right around the corner was where their their trash bins were and the moment i walked over that i could smell the waft of like the hot phoenix trash and blah, just everywhere bro don't get the meatballs <laughs> <laughs> is that from the fettuccine <laughs> Dude, I threw, and, and after that though, I, I I learned, you know, then I was like, all so right. So you well, continue. Well, because you know what I wanted? I was like, I, I do want to, the, I do want the nicotine, but I, I don't want to do this thing. And then I bought the, uh, you know. Bandits. The, the, the packets. The skull the, bandits. The skull, yeah, the packets. Because yeah. then I knew, oh, I'll throw one in my mouth. And then I started with one and then I would, I, I got to two. I would put two in my mouth at the same time. Like here? Or yeah, here? here and here. Yeah. Yeah, just down below. I wish my dad was alive because I'd really like to ask him. It worked, the method to his madness. But I'm telling you, I was in like, I'm not kidding you, elementary school. And my dad let me try dip. And I was like, you know, what is that? And he's like, oh, it's dip. And he would tell me, don't ever chew tobacco. He would tell me about his uncle. Because I always thought tobacco looks so cool in those pouches. Like you the, mean real tobacco like leaves? Like beach nut and red man. Yeah. I always thought it looked so fucking cool. A lot cool. of kids probably have never seen that. Yeah, it looks like a big league. It's a big, big league, league chew, chew packet. Bag, which with, is why we used to love exactly. big league chew. It, and it's tobacco. And you could get it with or without the plug. Remember, there'd be a plug oh, yeah. on it. Oh, yeah. And my dad said that one of his uncles used to chew it. And he said that one time the dude fell asleep in like a recliner and he heard it go boom down. <laughs> and he said, throwing up and just shitting himself for like a day. <laughs> and he's like, I'm telling you, don't fuck with that. But this, yeah. I go, I don't know. He's like, trust me. So I take a pinch of Hawkin. Oof. And I put it in here and I put a skull bandit in here. To what? Yeah. Double it, up? I'm like 10. Okay, my dad's giving us this shit at like 10, fifth yeah. grade probably. And I do it for maybe two or three times, and then I just start fucking Yakin. puking. And to this day, this when someone will pop, like all my friends dipped and shit, when they'd pop that can, I would smell it. I'd be, so that, this that 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 winter green. Or oh, that, yeah. Oh, I can't fuck with it at all. Dude, well, that's like I, we have all those smells that like we talk. You hear me, though. We, we talk about. Uh, the first time that you did whiskey, at the, uh, or I got drunk. I think we talked about that last time, mm -hmm. and I remember wild the, turkey. Yeah, that wild tea. The first time I uh, got lit up off of Captain Morgan, I couldn't. I can't spice rum to this day. Any kind of rum. Yeah, rum to me is repulsive. I smell it somewhere, yeah. and it makes me so nauseous. Me it get, with, right, yes. you know, you feel it yeah. right here, right get in the, this. And little... I get the, I get the sharp saliva. Oh yeah, down it drips like, down from your earlobe. Oh, yeah. You're like, where is <laughs> this coming from? Yeah. yeah, no, I, I couldn't do it anymore, man. I got, I just the sm the smell of that. But you know what's so funny is I made a shift recently from whiskey. I'm drinking a lot more tequila now. 
I love tequila. Dude, I just got into it because I, it's forever I never drank tequila. And you know all those years of people, you drink shitty tequila. That's it. You so, just so, so tequila in your mind is a shitty bar yep. in, in in whatever Patron. town you're from, and they're plastic cups. You yeah. know, they're like little shitty plastic yeah. cups, and it's a hot quare. Old ass dried out lime wedge sticking on it. Right. Yeah, and it's hot. It's hot quare. It's hot quervo. So that was always my experience with it. So I just I hated it. And then recently I got back into it because a friend was like, You got some good tequila. And I said, I don't like tequila, man. I said, You gotta just try. He gave me 1942. And I sipped it, and I was like, "Oh wow, this is just a different. That's it. It's a different world." I dated a girl that was uh, she worked at tequila bars, and same thing. And I was like, "Nah, you know, she's mm-hmm. like Patron's trash, and it is trash." Yeah. Um, but she introduced me to. I want to say it's called Siete Leguas, which I think is Seven Horses, maybe. Yes. And they took that that recipe. I believe I, I'm wrong a lot, but I believe Patron is owned by Dan Aykroyd and Paul Mitchell, like the hair dude. Air, well, Aykroyd owns Crystal Skull Vodka. I know that. You know the Crystal Skull? Yep. He owns that and he owns... Damn, there's one I more. I think it's Patreon. Is it? Is it? Or Patre- Patreon. Patreon. <laughs> For, go to Sickness Speaking Patreon away, right now. Sign up for my Patreon, honeydew with y'all. It's only five <laughs> bucks a month. You get... A year, uh, if you sign up for a year, you get a month free and you get the honeydew now, audio and video, a day early, ad free at no additional Plug cost. it. <laughs> I like um, that. Oh, you know who owns You know who owns them now? Who? Bacardi. Oh, there you go. Bacardi but now they just owns them. took basically the recipe and tweaked it enough and then threw mad money behind promotion and yeah. pay, uh, Patron is born. Right. But I like, like she gave me top shelf. I mean, literally, I'm yeah. in the bar there and- and when I dr- I was like, oh, okay, this, this is it. This is what tequila is. Right. We all get the fucking white, Cuervo white, white, bullshit. white tequila. Yeah. This is what fucking and and I mean velvet, just like smooth. Didn't make me wince. None right. of that shit just went right down. Well, forever I, like, oh, I didn't know tequila. Fuck. You know, forever I didn't know anything about blanco or reposado right. or añejo. And now I've mm-hmm. learned what I like too. Because at the beginning, tequila, tequila, tequila to me. It's like it's that yellow piss shit in the hot yep. bottle that I don't. A good drink. shot of tequila and a joint. Man, that's a fucking night. Now, right do you there. see? I always drank when I smoked too. I loved, but my old, my trick was, you know, some people don't like to cross fade or whatever mm-hmm. the fuck. But that's such a '90s yeah. term. But uh, <laughs> and that's so don't funny. cross fade your don't drinks, be cross man. Fade, man. <laughs> but I, you create cross fade in the streets. You see him cross fade <laughs> You know, <laughs> oh, he he started with tequila. Now he's drinking he's beer. Cross faded. It's over. And here we pour whiskey. Da 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 da. We interrupt whiskey ginger. Uh, with breaking news, the Lawnmower 4.0 launch. The 4.0. Come on, Manscaped is bringing you the new new. This is your pubic service announcement. Sorry, public service announcement. And it's what you've been waiting for. Manscaped engineering team has confirmed they have successfully created the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, baby. Woo, 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 woo. I just got one. I used it. I used it on my bouffant. It's uh, incredible. Two million men worldwide who trust Manscaped. Including my pops. I sent one to my pops. He cleaned up his nipple hair. That's what he said. I got long nipple hair. Uh, and uh, we all trust Manscaped. And this offer is 20% off and free worldwide shipping for the code Manscaped. Uh, sorry. For the code Whiskey20 at Manscaped.com. Go to Manscaped.com. Use that code Whiskey20. Uh, I'm one of the first people to try the 4.0. And I got to tell you, nice. That no nick technology, baby. I really like it. It's actually a sleek design. It looks a little bit more smooth. And the old ones, they kind of copied the design. It felt like the iPhone was being repeated. But no, no, no. This one was sleek, baby. It's really nice. I do like it. The Lawnmower 4.0 gives you the ability to turn the 4000K LED spotlight on when needed for a more precise shave. You can get in the nooks and the crannies. Uh, if you're still trimming your face with your ball trimmer, it's time to make some changes, dude. You don't want your nuts on your own chin. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code WHISKEY20 at manscaped.com. No person wants to end up with pubes in their mouth, and your balls are going to thank you. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code WHISKEY20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off, free shipping, manscaped.com. Use the code WHISKEY20. Unlock your confidence, and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. Ginger. I like gingers. He's high as fuck. <laughs> but I, 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 my whole thing was like, I like to have a drink and then smoke a joint. Yeah. If I smoke a joint and then have the drink, it's somehow something about the the chemical mix up in my brain make you sick. 
No, it doesn't make me sick. It's just it does like for a lot of people. It doesn't my make me feel as good as I do when I have the drink first. Right. I can't explain it. I don't even really drink much. This this right this, here. This is it for you. This drink. I mean, this might be. I might have had one other drink during this entire pandemic. Maybe oh, two. Shit. I smoke weed. You know what I mean? Like I'm weed and. But I'm, don't you? I, the combo to me is. Yeah. If I have a nice whiskey and a joint, or like I said, a, and I'll say this too, and you know, obviously the rock's not paying me to say this but his tequila is fucking good tremaine you get tremaine or whatever tremana yeah. tremana is yeah. it terramana or tremana yeah uh vote below <laughs> <laughs> rename the rock tequila well you well um, uh, casamigos too is uh what yeah. was uh um, but they locked that Clooney's. bullshit up yeah Clooney, yeah, Clooney and, and fucking sold it for a billion dollars yep give me that fucking money yeah i know someone but that got a million the rock you can get it on Right on the shelf. Yeah. And I think it tastes better than Casamigos, which is good tequila. Yeah, no, it is good tequila. I, well, but that's funny. I, I've never had his tequila. I've, I've, I've seen I, it. I promise you, you'll be pleasantly surprised. And it's fucking cheaper. Rock, the Rock's keeping it affordable out there. This guy, he is the he's the yep. most all-American motherfucker on planet. When somebody's like, what represents America truly? Like, truly, of all the race bullshit that's going on in this country and nonsense, you're like, here's a dude who who literally made it from zero 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 as in like and his dad was a i mean even more a professional wrestler anybody yeah. would have said you're fucking nuts. you're fucked yeah, yeah you're fucked it's never gonna work uh broke homeless uh non-white dude coming into this world of wrestling with all these white you know any of these white heroes that kind of dominated wrestling our whole lives and then this dude comes in who is a you know ex football player not failed because that's not the right way to say it but it just didn't work out the way he wanted yeah, he it played to. It for the hurricanes i mean how can you say that's a failure well after that though he yeah. definitely wanted to continue on in a pro career and it just didn't work but like but what a pivot well because dude that collapses most people right if You're once done. that's over it's he was like well then he, and look even if he would have been fucking reggie white right He's still higher on the totem pole for with sure. What he did with himself for after sure. that than he and ever would have And then capitalizing that. on that, then in, then becoming in film, then becoming more than that stuff. It's weird to see people transcend the entertainment yep. industry and go to a place of like. Now you're doing kids movies, right? Like, now you're what? just now you're kind of yep. a personality. Mm -hmm. Like The Rock is a attitude, less so. Yes, it you is. know what I mean? It's like a symbol now yep. and all that. It's that bull a symbol, brand, right? He's a brand now, which is powerful as fuck. When so when someone's like, "What is America?" or "Was make America great?" You're like. That's what it is. Well, all this bullshit rhetoric that politicians try to push around on what's America, that's it. A dude that's able to make it and persevere through bullshit and be beloved by people for being strong-willed and good and talented. And also down to earth. I, I see these videos of him pulling up next to school buses and while they're on the road and they're all knowing yeah, yeah. him and shit. Like, I love that shit. It is funny because it, now because of social media being in the know or in the, in the public eye, you either have to make a choice. You either have to be the man of the people or you have to disappear. You either got to be Daniel Day Lewis and be a fucking ghost, or you have to be like, well, I'm I'm you, I'm with you. Like when he did that video about having Corona, I thought that was, I thought that was a, a great thing to do. Because a lot of times, I know a lot of guys that are notable and they had Corona and they didn't want to talk about it. They were afraid of the backlash of being like, were you being irresponsible or whatever the fuck people were pushing around. He was like, my family got it. And, I did one episode you know? with the Honest Papas and we got it's the most complained about episode. Why? Because people were tired of hearing about Corona. We were tired yeah. of hearing, but but I hadn't talked about it. Right. I'm sitting down to do an episode, and I'll say it's a damn good episode because other than losing my smell, we had it very easy. You and I, yeah. And and the six people, well, there were six of us total, five other people in my little circle. That little but super spreader circle. Their over. shit was, he was in and out of the hospital. Right. Like, it was fucking crazy. Yeah. So we were talking about how... You know, like he's in the back of an ambulance riding to the hospital. We're literally driving around listening to Christmas carols, looking at lights and shit because we couldn't be with anybody but ourselves in a car. <laughs> <laughs> We're just, just hearing those sleigh bells jiggling and he's Woo! being hauled Woo! off, passing yeah! us in an ambulance. Yeah, yeah that's great. That's like a but that's, people that's, hated, that's, hated hated hearing about. It. Yeah, but you know what? Whatever. It was the thing that happened. That's what happened. It was the thing that happened. And I did one episode. I didn't do every episode about COVID during we, the entire we're, we're going to look pandemic. back on all this shit. I'm glad I have it when I look back. It's a record of what happened during that. It was a thing shit. that existed for yeah. sure. I want to see how all this shit bounces back because of it. I'm ready for LA to come back, dude. Yeah, I'm so ready on. for all this stuff to go away. And also, they're close. They're, they're, they're close. cleaning up a lot of stuff. They're making it try to get back to where it was because. 
Well, my daughter's school is back. Now, I just read the newsletter today. It's only like 18% of all schools in California are back full time, and her school is, and they're in Santa wow. Monica. Thank God. I was telling you about, I want to talk to you oh, about yeah, prom. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can yeah. we Tell talk me about, about your prom? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So for me, my, my stepson just, uh, he's 17. He had a senior prom, right? And they didn't get a prom last year. They didn't get a junior senior prom right, last right, year because right. of the pandemic. And this year, they barely got this one in. So I was really stoked that he had it. And he lives with his dad out in fucking Upland by uh, the Where's Ontario that? Improv. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rancho, Ontario, Upland's yeah. all in the same pocket. And uh, so he's like, hey, we're going to this little pond over at this park to take pictures. And this is the pond where everyone fucking goes. I know, yeah. So I'm telling my daughter, she's like, ah, I'm like, we're going to go see your brother. We're going to drive out there and we're going to be family and you're going to see your brother off to prom and take pictures. And I go, don't you know about prom? And she goes, no. And I go, Psh, Stella, prom's right up your fucking alley. So I Google prom pictures and dresses and she shits. Because this is So I shit. throw her in the bath. Yeah. I do her hair. I braid her hair. I put the clips in and everything. I put her in this fucking amazing dress with this little white fur top and shit yeah and i'm like and she's like can i wear my sneakers and i was like fuck yeah 100. go out there and rock this shit yeah. so i wear my night pants i put it on instagram and we get out there and i'm like listen i'll give you 20 bucks for prom tonight but if you take the pictures i want to take i'll give you 50 to take your date out because i know everybody else is giving them money you know 100%. what i mean yeah and he's like, I don't want to do it. I'm like, we're doing it. So he's like, all right, I'll take the 50. So I put the night pants on. I made him. He's 6'4". And I made him stand behind me and put his arms around me like I'm his date. You know, and I'm just <laughs> leaning into him like this, dude, in front of all his friends, in front of all those people out there. He's like, hurry up. I'm like, nah, we're taking a few of these. You keep going, keep clicking. And I PayPal him right there after we're done. And when my daughter saw those girls, she's just shit like, whoa. And I was like, I told you, I told you. So she felt all like. Because she's boom. like a girly girl, huh? Well, but, I mean, I'm so happy because she's both. Like, my daughter will run over to me and punch me in my fucking face. Right. You know, play in the dirt, loves the fish, but loves her makeup and dresses, sure. too. You know, so I oh, got the wait, best of again? both worlds. She's six. Six. And, like, I was dressing. She's like, Derek's wearing blue. His shoes are crazy glittery. So I put this little blue Fila jacket on that, honestly, is not even flattering. <laughs> and she's like, that is your color, Dad. And I was, I was like, who the fuck are you over here? She's like, mm, that's your color. That's I so said, great right. though that this, she because now that six is about the age when she starts to like. That's when you start remembering. Shit, well, right? and really develop your yeah. your own opinions and personalities mm -hmm. about it. So before that, you know, kids just say such annoying shit, and you know that's not like that. That kid said the darndest thing. He's like, yeah, they do because they're fucking annoying. They're yeah. like little weirdo machines. She's starting to recognize, uh, you know, a lot of personality traits that she either. Um, you know, not mocks, but like emulates or like it takes in is like, oh, I like that about people or I don't like that about people. Man, she takes shit in too. She, we saw one of his friends had a girl with him a date and she was super cute. Yeah. They all look great. And no one talked to her or mentioned her or anything. And that night in bed, my daughter and I are talking. I'm like, whose dress was the, your favorite? And I'm asking her all these questions. And she goes, Trevin's um, date was really pretty. And I was like, you noticed that? She's like, mm-hmm. I was like, damn, man, you were yeah. over there taking it all. Like, I wonder what through her eyes what you were taking in well, everyone's they, dresses. They have, they, kids have always, I mean, we were the same way. We were perceptive, but like now even more so because I think I think social media and the internet has made heightened awareness of everything. They're it's, way more aware than we were. Fuck yeah. We don't- Over aware. Yeah, they're they're hyper yeah. aware. It yes. might, it, it partially is negative, but also like it is we didn't negative. think about much. I think they think about a lot of that stuff. They see it, they feel it, they know it. But the thing they have to worry about that we never did is, hey, you're on camera all the, your potential- Crazy. Camera all the time. You have to grow up like that. You know damn well, yeah. no, no one. I don't, I'm not talking about comedians. I'm talking about if we had cameras like that back then, half this fucking workforce would not be working right <laughs> yeah, now. You know, over. What I'm saying? half over. of this fucking workforce, yeah, dude, in the country. Forget occupation. Dude, the last, the last uh, when I first moved to LA, the last uh, day job that I had, we we went out for a company party, and got blacked out with the boss, and she said some real foul shit, and I was like. Back then, we're laughing about it and getting fucked up and super inappropriate shit, you know, like wildest shit. And it's just like today, never dissolve the company. Never. Like, yep. It'd be over. Over. Yeah, she was wild as fuck. But you're like, that's just, it was just a sign of the times of like now the stringency of all that stuff is just crazy. I mean, you know, like I heard a friend who's working on a thing and he missed 
gendered somebody. He had worked with somebody on this thing and she was a guy when they started. And now she's a, a, a female. <clears throat> and, you know, this dude accidentally said he, or I'm sorry, said she or whatever. I've, I've done it all fucked up, but you know what I mean. The opposite. And the per, and this person got so mad and had his ass fired. And I thought, Fired? Yeah. And it wasn't because of like, the guy wasn't making a joke about it. He wasn't being diminutive. He genuinely was making kind of an absent-minded mistake. Like I knew you as something before, as someone before and now, and it might just be an old habit of... Sure. Yeah. Yeah, sickler. He wants this thing. It's like saying that. Mm -hmm. But Tell me about your prom, your senior prom. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I want to hear like, what? I'll tell you about ours. Like, what I did you guys hear. do? What was the whole... Well, did you do limos and dinner and shit like that? We did. We went over to like... We went over to... Um, oh, this reminds me. This is so funny. Do you ever see the show Rock of Love? Yeah. You know, with Brett Michaels? Yep. So the girl that won was my date. Nah, -uh. I don't I've never seen who won or anything, but I know the show. She won the first season. <laughs> she was your prom she, date? No, no, no. Oh. She was my she was my turnabout or whatever they called it. You know, spring. Oh, yeah. You know yeah, where yeah. the girl asked the guy? We never had that. The Sadie Hawkins. Sadie Hawkins. <laughs> that I couldn't think of the name. That's who you it had is. That? Yeah, yeah. In yeah. high school? Yeah, spring. Yeah, oh, we, we didn't it have any of that. But I remember I think we had like a spring form one. They didn't make the girls fucking step up. But that but I remember it just it brought my it brought my brain there because the prompt because I remember taking photos and going to like this dude's house. And we all went to this guy's house. And the whole time, everyone's like, you know, no one, you know, the girls were being goody two shoes. And I was like, we're getting fucking lit up. Like, if they know that they smell booze on you, you, they won't let you in. I'm like, I'm the wackadoo goofball at school. They they know I'm already, they were going to kick me out if they were going to kick me out. And we show up tanked out of our fucking heads. Where, out of our heads. Where are you pre-gaming? Like at someone's house? At the house. Yeah. At the house and then in the car. And then do you go to dinner first? No. Dinner's after. Dinner's after. See, we're the opposite. Okay. You did dinner first? Yeah. See, because then I figure you have no energy to go do anything. If you ate before, I'd want to go to sleep. If I ate, I don't want to go to the dance. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I'd want to do the thing and then go out afterwards because that, that was just another reason to go get fucked up afterwards too and to go party and sneak around. Where did you go to dinner, by the way? Okay, I was um, I was invited to all four proms. Woo! My freshman year, a senior girl asked me to go. My dad's like, or my mom was like, that shit's not happening. I was like, what are you <laughs> Why? talking about? So I went, to, I went to three proms and I went to four homecomings. I was the homecoming, you'll laugh at this, or excuse me, I was the prince of my senior prom. Now, my girl and I, she was hot. What does that then. even mean, bro? My the girl prince? and I, right? Yeah. So apparently what they all, I still laugh about this because apparently what it was was I did win, but there was this couple that had been together since ninth grade. And they gave them king and queen. Ah, uh, right. And then we got, there was also a prince and a mm -hmm. princess and shit right, like right, that. Right, right, right. So we got, I got prince. Honorary shit. But I was popular because, again, we didn't have parents and everyone was at our fucking house. So I had votes. You know <laughs> right, what I mean? Like, right. if y'all want to come over after I had prom, some votes. Somebody needs yeah. to, I want to be, I want to carry a scepter up in this bit. <laughs> and um, so the next that was like a whatever it was on a saturday so on monday mm. my buddy is uh in the locker room with the guy that won king and uh he just we're changing they're in tidy whities and they start arguing over who really won he's like no ryan won that shit it was fixed they gave it to you and they start fist fighting over me <laughs> over in the their prince? underpants yeah <laughs> fighting for the oh, prince we still talk about that i'm like <laughs> i knew you were a real one when you fucking fist fought for me over the prince bullshit who won the fight your boy bro. yeah yeah your course. boy clipped him good um we nominated by the way king and queen we are, we all, not, just to be dicks, we nominated twins, bro brother and sister twins. <laughs> How fucked <laughs> up is that? <laughs> is that not the most mean That's shit? That's great. And then, by the way, like. That's great. That's <laughs> they, didn't, great. they didn't hate each other, but they definitely were from very different circle, friendship circle. <laughs> so they were pissed, dude. <coughs> oh. They were so fucking mad that they had to be out there on the football field. It was like such an insult. But also adamant we're adamant about like don't fucking vote like that was a big deal they were like do not do this and everybody was like we're doing, we're doing it shit, yeah. <laughs> how could you not how could you not how could you fucking not so i had my senior prom i was with the girl i've been seeing for a while um like a girlfriend or just yeah, a girlfriend gr right and she was like if you could pick someone for your senior prom to mm -hmm. do what this fucking girl did for me that night mm -hmm. and with to get like pfft, 
So we uh, we rent a limo first with a few friends. Remember I, how dope that was, by I the way? I think there was like six of us, and you Ooh, just felt limo. like... limo. You're, you're like, oh I'm bosses. What is this, a million dollars? What's in here? There's, oh, my God, there's drinks in here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's Pepsi, dude. There's Pepsi in here. God, I'm trying to remember where we went to dinner. I feel like... Like Baltimore City was always a popular spot, and Little Italy especially was always like a right. a, a real big. You gotta one. have Italian. And food. you would see the limos mm -hmm. pull up, and everyone, you know, we're talking ninety one, bro, big hair, oh, all yeah. that shit, right? So we go to dinner, and then we have to go to the dance, and then we go to the dance, and everybody's doing their thing, and then we, she and I, go get a hotel after, and I'm not kidding you, I'll never forget. I'm, she's like, just wait here, and I'm laying on the bed, and I'm. I am 18 years old. Yeah. My dick's been hard since I was seven. <laughs> <laughs> since I was seven. Not an hour before no. this. Forever. It stayed that way. And um, It's just been tough. And she and I were very sexual. Like, her mom even talked to us about, like, look, just be smart. I know right. what's going on. Right. You right. Know, and she was a cool, like... She was cool about it. She wasn't a right. cool mom where you could do whatever, but she's like, I know you guys are having sex, so please pull out. Be smart. Pull <laughs> out. <laughs> come on my daughter's face. <laughs> um, and I'll never forget, she's the one that told me, her mom one day casually said in the kitchen, Ryan, a good man needs to know how to cook in the kitchen and the bedroom. And I have never fucking forgot that. <laughs> I have never forgot Jeez, that. Jeez, mama. Like, Whoa, mom. Yeah. Um, so we get a hotel and i'm laying on the bed just mm -hmm. waiting and it feels like she's in the bathroom like for five years prepping, you know what i mean prepping, and yeah. she comes out in a white fucking teddy and i had never damn she packed bought an outfit damn everything this and is I, not my experience i had never seen a woman in lingerie before never. bra and panties never matching no you bro. know what i mean this is never matching teddy the fucking garter i, I mean the, the oh and i was like are you like the best senior prom date ever you could ever fucking have? And I remember when I won the prince, I'm dancing with the princess and I liked my girl so much. I was in the middle of the dance. I'm like, you smile if I go fucking dance with my girl. Like I kind of want to bounce. Damn. And I went and danced with my Where's girl. Where's she at? I wonder now. Uh, she just came to see me do stand up in Baltimore. Nah. -uh. She's got two kids. Um, I think she literally just got a divorce seeing somebody else now, but still good people. But she was drop dead gorgeous and i was like man if i could have like checked a box a list for what i wanted for prom and yeah. then <laughs> after that then sunday is everyone comes back to our place because right. we don't have parents and that's where everyone's partying getting and, fucked up yeah getting your wasted, spot wasted i fucked my prom date by a lake that's nice <laughs> outside I, I, had a, I had like a motel six outside bro. yeah you were upgraded a motel. well we also went to party we also used to outside, party a lot outside at the lake, at on the a blanket. lake. yeah on the lake That's on a blanket nice. I had to put it in the trunk but we used i remember i remember going to a bunch of parties and i think we went there that night a girl her mom got a divorce and the dad took off but they moved into one of those extended stay hotels. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm talking yeah. about? Where it's like a residence almost. But her mom was kind of so absent because of all the stuff. She would be out drinking at the bar and partying. And this girl, the irony was she was like a goody two shoes. This girl was like really tied up and prim and proper and very judgmental. But because mom wasn't there, we, we would all go to this hotel to just lose our minds and party. Oh, okay. And yeah. she would, and she'd be kind of a part of it and let it happen. But didn't like it. Up to a point. Yeah, well, I mean, the cops came, but like. <laughs> the cops made the, the point. The cops made yeah. the point, yeah. That was the we period. We had the cops come. But we, always, lot, but yeah. I, we would go over there because we know we could because it was a hotel, but it was, they. I know they live there, but it was still a, it was not a motel, but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, They're I've like seen extended, extended living. They're all, yeah. they say, well, I can't remember the name of it, but it's extended Yeah, but you know stays. which one I'm talking about. Totally not. But we used to go there. That's where we, we went to one of those extended states to party all through the night after we had hooked up by the lake. And I remember how disappointed she was that we didn't just get a hotel that we had to, I thought it was going to be romantic hooking up. Yeah. By, I was like, yeah, that I got a blanket. And shit. Not when the hill is like sideways. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's rocks. Yeah, those rocks and shit underneath. Yeah. <laughs> they just manured it. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah, they just see, they're seeding it while we're out there. <laughs> Excuse me, excuse me, Scudover. The fucking aerating the lawn and shit. There's goose shit everywhere. See, I, I just remember, like, again, I was easy. Like, I didn't have parents that wanted to take pictures. You know what I mean? Yeah. I go to you. What, what's Well, prom? see, I always went to somebody else's house, yes, too. I it was never at my house. house. We'll no. take the pictures with your parents because I right. have parents, and we're getting the fuck out of there. Right. We go. And then 
I'll t- I remember this too. Um, it was senior night. My brother and I were really good at soccer. Um, Who was better? Me. And in, in you heard that. Yeah. I yeah. You heard was. that. In he college, knows. I was all Juco. Yeah. He better know. And I know um, that Juco King. And I got hurt my senior year and I still made uh, Central Maryland, like the best of Central Maryland conference, the CMC conference. So there's county and then there's regional state. So I made like the best of I don't even state. know that. We just have state. Yeah. Well, how big was your high school? Are you like a 5A or nah, whatever? The I fuck? think a four or whatever. Oh, okay. So not, we were not big terribly as fuck. huge, but four. Yeah. Like we were big. So the competition for us was absurd. But senior night, our last home game, um, you know, your parents walk you out. Oh, right. We don't have parents. so And there's two of us because we're twins. So right. they gave, they had asked two cheerleaders on each arm to walk us out to the middle. So we got cheer. That's fly. <laughs> but listen, you got a whole line of every player and their parents. And everybody had two. Right. <laughs> and there's just us and the end with four cheerleaders. Oh, they gave us two. Two each. cheerleaders apiece. <laughs> it's just Give us two. And four Give them each two. The end. Make them feel off. That photo has got to be <laughs> they great. They were our two. I wish I had it. It's got to be out yeah, there. Yeah, you got to have that photo. Somebody's got that. But cheerleaders walked us out on parents' night. Yeah. But did you ever, like, you know, was that ever something that you kind of had to deal with? Or was it already kind of in the back of your mind that you. The missing of the parents thing. Did it ever kind of keep fucking with you as you became a young adult? I mean, or, it still fucks with me now does as a it? parent. Because yeah. you seem so stable with, with your kids. I mean, I'm stable with my kid, but also that's come from, you know, a ton of therapy, a ton of work, a ton of everything, and I'm right. still so fucked up. Yeah, but I are you though? Such a, yeah. So we all say, I think we all are quick to say we're fucked up, but I don't, I just think it's, we're all, we're, well, no one's we're all perfect. flawed. We're all flawed. Yeah, we all have I, our bullshit. I have a lot of work to do. Yeah. I, and I'll say this, you know, for someone who uses words for a living, mm. I often don't say the right thing the right way. Who does? You know what I mean? Which is what the beauty of stand up is. I get to go back out and work that until I get that sentence the way I want to. Right. You don't get to do that in arguments. Mm-hmm. You don't get to do that in, you know, conversation all the time. Right. You don't get so, to try again. Um I've worked at it, but um it keeps coming up. You know, as soon as you have a kid, then you're like, Man, I'd love to talk to my dad about how in the fuck he had twins in nineteen seventy three. Right. You know, um but at, to answer your question, going back I never looked at it like, oh, fuck, when we graduate, no one's going to be here. I don't remember ever having that anxiety. I right. just feel like, like you said, it was probably this just like given that it was a thing. <laughs> everything moving forward is going to be perilous. So right. that means tomorrow. That means your <laughs> wedding. <laughs> that means, you know, whatever. The kids. Yeah, with yeah. The kids and stuff. Too. Yeah. So you lose the, the specialness of graduation. Of, yeah. of all these things. Like when I graduated college, I didn't even walk the stage. No one was going to be there. There's going to be no one there to root for me. What because, the fuck would I Because do? mom. Still gone at that point. So yeah. you don't, once you realize that tomorrow and every day after is parentless, the the moments sort of just, they happen and you don't really. But does that mean to you, you make your moments with your kids much more important? Yeah, that's right? why you I drove out to make sure my things. daughter was with her brother on his senior prom. Yeah. I tried to explain to her. He didn't get one last year. And this is it until you turn seventeen or eighteen. Right. And we're looking at over a decade for that. So don't you think that's the that's like the, in the weirdest way? You know, sh- good things come from shit. You know, I don't know that I'd be the the dad I am, the person I am, or any of that if none of this adversity. Had right, that's kind of the know. unfortunate truth about right. a lot of those things. And our and our reality is like if you never go through this heavy bullshit, are you? are you ever going to be able to compensate for the mistakes that other people make? And I think that's why in society, when we all make mistakes, we should be more, a little bit more soft about the mistakes, you know, about, about shitting on people that make fucked up mistakes and do, cause like we're all figuring it out and it's, we're trying to correct our mistakes as we go. I just think we're in a new time where it's like, you fucked up. It's over. You're burnt. That's it. Yeah. And no I know leeway. No. Why? Nothing. Like, to me, the story of a person is a life story. It's yeah. not these five years. Right. It's not this moment. Right. It's not this job. It's not defined by this education. And I think that what people have be- gotten away from is, you know, an apology is just a bunch of words, mm. but your actions mean everything. So why don't you let someone, when they fuck up, if they're sincere about apologizing, then give them the freedom 
to show you that they've corrected it. Totally. That's all it is. You're you're not, you know, it's like you made a mistake, you're done. Like, wait, I didn't even know I made a mistake. Right. What? That seems like that's the biggest thing. You know what thing. I mean? It's those where you're like, I said something, I've mispronounced someone's name and I can no longer work. Right. Why? It's crazy. Why? How about allowing me to make a mistake, educating me on my ignorance, and then allowing me to show you that I am a good person and I it. can grow from it and fix it. Right. That's what real um our apologies and change and acceptance are yeah. is, is letting people fuck up that's how you grow look as us as comedians the only way for us to find out if something's truly funny is to go up and try it try out in front it. of people and no it doesn't matter if you and i are sitting here pissing ourselves right. you know that a crowd of a thousand people might just be like we, not, not was, at all it was okay it was all right yeah yeah and we're like man I have work to do. I fail with that. Right. I got to figure out how to make that right. that. And that's the work you have to do. Right. Our whole our whole career has been that way. So it's yeah. kind of funny to think that like society should take a note from that to be like, well, I guess you let them work out the work out the life joke. Like, like you have to let people be flawed. We're right. all flawed. Right. But you can't keep being flawed. Right. You keep doing it. That's the issue. Yeah. Right. You can, well, or if you do it with a lot of you know with negative and vitriol and shit behind you, it's got to be. And you know your mistakes have to be honest. They can't be like, I don't give a fuck, and that's how I really right, feel. Yeah, you know, it's got to be something. Yeah, yes. right. Although like Eminem was a great artist. Yeah, he was. <laughs> <laughs> it is funny about that shit. Like that, that's that, that dude. I mean, he was so big on fuck you, but that was also because the time of the culture was so hating on fucking music that was so pushing those limits, you know. And then now you listen to that stuff, and you're like, whatever Eminem said wasn't as uh oh my god as like wet ass pussy do you know what i mean like right, yeah. whatever he said still wasn't yeah. shocking as shit and also as you better watch it if you're coming for eminem oh bro he will he's fucking take, he's gonna get you he will take language and just I want to obliterate you corner, 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 I corner, mean, corner. man i don't want to be fucking ripped no up but at some point he's got to you know he's got to say good night i'm like who has a problem with it just you can let him have a problem with it. i'm not gonna <laughs> say shit. yo so are you are, what's the deal are you touring baby what are you doing uh, I'm starting to get back out. I have September dates right now. What do you got? Plug them and let these people come out and see uh, your at Phoenix. I'm Wait, be... September? Yeah, not until September. What is it now? It's May? May. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. I just got Vax, bro. Vax I gotta, up. I got to build some dates up. All right, so, so, so but hit these I am dates. working on a tour right now, so we're working on dates. But what I have on the books right now confirmed is Phoenix. And I know I'm going to be coming back to edmonton i know i'm gonna be coming back to house of comedy house of comedy clubs uh, what else you, uh, hopefully wait, vancouver that, yeah. i'm gonna be doing baltimore probably sometime in september as well um we'll figure it out go to where go to ryan subscribe to my youtube uh this dude has a great show i'm gonna go back and do his please show please come we back. did we, we did podcast. we did the show i did the show in every location it's existed in by the way yeah, you have. Yeah, and I yeah, like. And I've you done go back to crab feast. Crab where feast, and that over. I think you even came back to my apartment. So Fact. A, yes. So I've been, I've apartment, been everywhere now. But now studio. you're in the studio. I'm at Santa Monica. Santa Monica Music right Center now. Now, yeah. And, and and check that shit out. Check out the Honey Dizu, and then go to his Patreon and support this motherfucker because yeah, he's all doing social great media. Work. Is Ryan Sickler, RyanSickler.com. The Patreon's there. It's the Juco there. champ. So all Juco bro. pay respects. You know what I mean? Do the right thing. Dude, thank you for having thank me. Thank you, man. I'm glad you came through. And we, uh, by the way, I see these, uh, these boosts. You're ready to play at all times. Stay, stay ready. <laughs> stay ready. All right. You got to go to dinner. La, look in the sa Look in your camera. That one right there. And, uh, I'm going to walk off. You do one word or one phrase. I should have acknowledged. This is the first time we did three cameras. I, was it I didn't know it was that. only a one camera show. Who's until editing now. for you? You got somebody that's got to edit all this for you now. Huh? You have to edit it. You doing it? I don't <laughs> Oh, bro, you I'm throwing this to out to the wind. <laughs> I'll yes. be nodding at yeah. you. Not yeah. And it'll just be a, a you the whole time. <laughs> yeah. And the audio will just be my voice and your. Yeah. All right, what am I look saying? That on the look at that camera. One okay. word or one phrase. I'm going to walk off camera and you're going to do it by yourself. I don't remember what I said last time, so I don't want to repeat it. It doesn't myself. matter. It's, actually, right. it's actually kind of beautiful if it is a, 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 a repeat of what you said before. Okay. This whiskey's got my tongue tied. All right, I'll say this. Go ahead. I'll say a phrase that I really, really like. I I, um, I learned it from this dude. It was on his car. Uh, he was a racer, and it was on his car. It was in Latin. Um, and I'll say it in English because I can't say it in Latin. But the saying is, I come in peace, ready for war. In here, we pour whiskey, 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 whiskey. whiskey. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse.